Performing the qPCR assay for Enterococcus. For training purposes, the procedure has been broken up into seven steps. Step 1. Filtering the water sample. Step 2. Extracting the bacterial DNA. Step 3. Preparing a standard curve. Step 4. Preparing the qPCR master mix. Step 5. Loading the 96 well qPCR plate. Step 6. Sealing the qPCR plate. And Step 7. Initiating the qPCR run. The initial step in the qPCR assay for Enterococcus is to capture the bacteria in the water sample on a filter. First, attach a disposable filter funnel to the vacuum manifold. Next, pour 100 milliliters of the sample into the funnel. For a negative extraction control, use 100 milliliters of sterile phosphate buffered saline solution in place of the sample water. Turn on the vacuum to start the filtration. When the filter is visibly dry, rinse the sides of the funnel with a small volume of sterile phosphate buffered saline solution. When the filter is again dry, turn off the vacuum and remove the funnel from the base, taking care not to disturb the membrane. Sterilize two pair of forceps by soaking in ethanol and then applying to a flame. When the forceps have cooled, carefully fold the filter in half, making sure to handle the filter by its edges. Fold the filter in half twice again and place in a screw cap tube preloaded with glass beads. The next step is to extract the DNA from the bacteria captured on the filter, which we'll accomplish through bead beading. First, retrieve a pre-prepared single-use aliquot of salmon testes DNA and a frozen filter containing 100,000 enterococcus cells from the minus 80 degree freezer. This filter serves as reference material for the assay and following extraction will be diluted to create a standard curve. The salmon testes DNA will be added to each sample, standard, and negative extraction control as a specimen processing control for qPCR inhibition and extraction loss. Next, prepare the bead beading buffer by combining 490 microliters of AE buffer with 10 microliters of salmon testes DNA for each sample. Start by adding the AE buffer to a sterile 50 milliliter polypropylene tube. Then add the salmon testes DNA vortex to mex and spin briefly to collect aerosolized liquid. For convenience, this buffer may be prepared up to one week in advance of use and stored in the refrigerator. Before each use, briefly vortex the bead beading buffer to mex. Add 500 microliters of the buffer to each screw capped filter tube. Replace the pipette tip each time between tubes to prevent a cross sample contamination. Next, insert the tubes into the bead beater. Take care that the tubes are distributed evenly to prevent damage to the instrument and possible loss of samples. Close the safety hood and run the bead beater at maximum speed for two minutes. When the instrument stops, remove the tubes and spin for one minute at 12,000 G in a microcentrifuge. Meanwhile, prepare and label a fresh microtube for each sample. Now, using a micropipette and changing tips between each sample, carefully transfer as much liquid as possible from each of the centrifuge tubes to the corresponding fresh tube you labeled in the previous step. Take care not to jostle the beads and filter to prevent picking up unwanted debris particles. Next, place the tubes containing the recovered liquid into the microfuge and spin for 5 minutes at 12,000 G. The next step is to prepare a qPCR standard curve to measure the efficiency of the qPCR reaction. 
Prepare to make the four-point qPCR standard curve by labeling three fresh microtubes, 1 to 10, 1 to 100, and 1 to 1000. Then add 90 microliters of nuclease-free molecular biology grade water to each tube. To make the 1 to 10 dilution, briefly vortex and spin the DNA extract from the pre-prepared standard filter. Then add 10 microliters to the 1 to 10 dilution tube. The next step is to dilute the DNA extracts. Prepare to dilute the DNA extracts from all sample filters 1 to 5 by setting up and labeling a dilution tube for each sample. Pipette 80 microliters of nuclease-free water into each tube. Make sure to vortex and spin each tube in turn. Then add 20 microliters of DNA extract from the corresponding tube. The next step is to prepare the qPCR master mixes in a dedicated PCR hood. Prepare the hood by wiping the surface with a 10% bleach solution. When finished, change gloves. Next, rinse the surface with deionized water and change gloves again. Finally, wipe surfaces with 70% ethanol and change gloves once more. Changing gloves between each cleaning step is important to prevent contamination. Now that the work area has been decontaminated, the next task is to prepare the specimen processing control assay for the salmon testes DNA. The qPCR buffer, DNTPs, and DNA polymerase are packaged together in the form of a lyophilized bead brand named Omnimex. Each individually packaged Omnimix bead contains enough material for two qPCR reactions. Calculate the number of beads necessary to run a four-point standard curve, each sample, the negative extraction control, and a no-template control in duplicate. In general, it is good practice to prepare an excess of about 10% to account for pipetting error. Sequester the proper number of Omnimix beads for the specimen processing control assay in a microtube. Next, prepare the master mix for the Enterococcus qPCR assay. Repeat the process you used to prepare the master mix for the specimen processing control assay, substituting the primer probe beads for Enterococcus. The primers and probe for the specimen processing control also come in bead format. These beads are packaged in an easy-to-use dispenser. Each of these beads contains enough material for four qPCR reactions, so only half as many primer probe beads need to be added to the microtube containing the Omnimex beads. Next, add nuclease-free water to the beads. 40 microliters for each Omnimex bead and 80 microliters for each primer probe bead. This is the specimen processing control master mix. Briefly vortex to dissolve the beads. Briefly spin the master mix to return any aerosolized liquid to solution. The next step is to load the qPCR plate. Both the specimen processing control and the enterococcus assays will be run on the same 96-well PCR plate. The specimen processing control assay will be run in wells at the top of the plate, 
while the enterococcus assay will be run in wells at the bottom of the plate. The next step is to load the plate. Using a repeating pipette, add 20 microliters of the appropriate master mix to the wells designated for that assay. Now add the diluted DNA extracts to the qPCR master mix. On the lab bench, add 5 microliters of sample, standard dilution, or negative control to the designated specimen processing control and enterococcus assay wells. Make sure to vortex and spin each tube before removing DNA extract and adding it to the plate. Remember to change pipette tips between each well. Each sample will be run in duplicate for both assays. Use nuclease free water as a no template qPCR control. The next step is to seal the plate. Place an adhesive seal on the top of the plate. Apply pressure to ensure that each well is completely sealed. Place the plate in a balanced plate spinner and spin for 20 seconds. The next step is to initiate the qPCR run. Open the lid of the BioRad CFX96 real-time system and seat the plate in the machine. Close the lid. Always use the controls on the instrument to open and close the lid. Never try to operate the lid manually or you may damage the instrument. Open the CFX Manager software on the attached laptop computer and select Create New Experiment. Under Express Load, select Rapid Scorpion. This sets the cycling parameters to 95 degrees for 2 minutes followed by 45 cycles of 94 degrees for 5 seconds and 62 degrees for 43 seconds. Next, define your plate setup by identifying sample type and assay in each well on the plate editor screen. You are now ready to start your qPCR run. Click Start and name the assay with your name and today's date. When the run is finished, remove the 96 well plate from the thermocycler and discard without disturbing the seal. Export the data from the thermocycler to the pre-prepared spreadsheet. You are now ready to calculate your results.